Hey, welcome to the Runaways Podcast. My name is Cody. Uh, today I am joined by Dan and Fino. Once again, Fino's almost becoming a regular on the podcast at this point, uh, <laughs> which is not a complaint, by the way. Uh, today we are going to be talking about why this is the best meta we've ever had. And uh, we're going to talk about the last week's results from the RTN season. And then we have Battle Hard in Philly coming up as well. So quite a lot that's about to happen. So hopefully we get to meet a bunch of you guys at the Battle Hardened Philly. I know that I've been running into a lot of people on our road to nationals uh, weeks that have been listening to the podcast. And I definitely always appreciate when people come up, talk to us about what's going on, what they like. Um, and it's been great to meet everyone. But let's kick this off real quick. We're going to go into what happened last week at RTNs. I know we all had RTNs. Uh, Fino, how did your RTNs go this last weekend? So I had two RTNs that I went to. Both of them were CC. One of them I went to two, and my mis my losses I think were my mistakes type of situation. Where like one of them was making me realize like a deck building error that I had of like okay, good to see this here. I can resolve this before the Pro Tour if I submit this list. And then the other one was me getting juiced by a play I just didn't see, and uh, it was he played a riled up when I was at one. And I blocked exact, and then he pit, uh, discarded the an agile to it, and I was like, "No, <laughs> I just died. <laughs> I just didn't see that. I felt so stupid. I was very and it and it was a if I block with three cards, I live and still win. I just greeted on keeping that extra card for no reason. So that was a very unhappy with that loss. A hundred percent me. And then the other one, I went." Um, I top aided, and then in top eight, I faced uh, one of my friends, and I just conceded so he could get his invite because uh, he this is the last one he was going to, and needed his invite. Wait, wait, you conceded to someone not on your team? You know, it's so funny. Everyone wait, people talking, people do that? What? It's so funny. Everyone talking about that th this season. I I've done this for like multiple seasons. I just I'm not gonna. I don't talk about that shit. Like, who cares? It's none of their business. Like, I usually want this is the weird thing like this season was kind of weird for me because i previously every single season was just like auto queued because of xp like uh it was funny uh lil the one that i topped i didn't actually top uh pro quest or whatever for that one i think i played like one pro quest but i just went because i had the xp so like in the past like i, I was able to just freely scoop people in for their invites because i knew i was always queued or this season, I'm like, oh, I actually have to fight for it a bit and uh, <laughs> make make sure I get this because my uh, ELO wasn't there. And then uh, now ELO matters and XP doesn't matter. So it's like, well, can I scoop now that my ELO matters? So that was, uh, that's now a tough decision where before it wasn't. Yeah. Uh, who knows that uh, pro players sometimes scoop to other people that are not on their team. Uh, Dan, speaking of people who scoop to other people, uh, <laughs> how was your weekend? I know on, on, on the last podcast that we had, what? uh, yep. you said that Fab hated you all weekend. Uh, did Fab hate you this weekend? Right on. Fab was so, so very normal this weekend. I played one RTN, it was CC. Uh, I went back to Warrior, I did my silly, I blocked two cards, I swing two weapons every turn, <laughs> and it went great. I went 6-0, and oh. I played six different heroes, interesting, different games, low variance. It was great. I went undefeated, uh, one seed after Swiss, and then I I conceded to a local friend, and I got a beer and a nice steak next door, and it was a great time. Uh, and then on Sunday, I played Star Wars Unlimited. Oh, but at the RTN, um, my brother and I top aided for the second week in a row, and second time ever, so that was cool. And he got his invite, thanks to the person who I got a steak and beer with. <laughs> <laughs> so it was uh a great weekend. Yeah, your brother has uh, improved a ton since he's been playing. Yeah, he's he tops. He started way every after event you. he played this season. Yeah, or like all but one. He just kept getting eighth or losing a top eight. It's like no, it's one more. Yeah, he beat me uh, with like the last yeah. two cards in his deck or something close to that. Yeah, he, he can get you. He's yeah. not. He's like he's not perfect, but like I lose to him all the time. Yeah, he's, he'll steal some games. Now that he's no longer playing Fi, much better. <laughs> get, that makes get, sense. get off that deck and on to something a little bit more powerful um but no i've been very impressed with his play um this whole season so uh and he got is his he, invite is he which is awesome is he still on uh levia that was the last i saw him on yep yep yeah i've played him twice now uh it was Le uh, lexi 
at Nationals last year, and then Levia at the the Realm thing. Mm. Yeah, he smushed me on Levia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he went like X and one at the Realm day one or something, yeah. and he just went out like O three, <laughs> unlucky. But yeah, he had, he's been he's been playing playing good Flash and Blood. Yeah. So we're gonna go to Minnesota together. It's my birthday weekend. I'm pumped. That's sweet. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. I played the same one that you. It was Bearded Dragon um, out in New Jersey. It was a nasty, rainy day, but we drove out. Uh, funny story about that one. I had one of my locals message me like the night before, and he's like, hey, I really want to go to this RTN. Can I ride with you to the RTN? And I was like, sure. Like, you can ride with me. Like, he'll like, I'll, he's like, I'll show up at, you know, wherever you're going to be at. And then you just we'll just drive there. And I said, I don't have an issue with you going with me, but I have to explain how my weekend works. I Like, my weekends I spend with my girlfriend every weekend. Like, that's her like our agreement that we've had for like the last eight years. Like that's, that's what we do. Obviously fab comes and messes that up sometimes, but you know, that that's it. That's understandable. However, that means when I go to these events, if I don't top or as soon as I'm not able to top, I typically just like leave the event because I'm going to go back home and spend time with my girlfriend. Cause that's like, that's our agreement. And that's what I want to do. Not just, you know, uh, what we agreed to do. And so I let him know that I said, Hey, there is a situation in which if you go further in the tournament that I do, <laughs> I will just leave. Like, uh, you'll have to have another way home. Like, are you willing to take that risk? You can ride with me, but you have to know that this risk may happen. And he said, yeah, that's fine. I will take that risk. And of Uh-oh. course, because we spoke into an existence, this is going to be the oh, no. only event that I did not top. Not only did I not top this event, I played Droma and got absolutely destroyed. My matchup spread was just like brute, brute, brute. It was like RIDAR, RIDAR. I was just like, oh my God, no. Like I went three and three. Uh, my last round, I lost to you know lost to your brother. Uh, got he you know he he got his winning in. Um, and then <laughs> the whole day because I started off, I like lost game one, and I could see the look on his face like oh no. And then <laughs> and then I win, and he's like oh okay you're fine because he, he went, like he like went, went undefeated in Swiss right. Uh, the local that we brought, and <laughs> and then I like lose my my winning in, and I'm like I'm out. And he's like, no, 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 there's, you could, you could, you could definitely still top. And I was like, no, there's no way mathematically I can top, but I will play the last round just for you. And so I played the last round and then just got smushed by a Reinar as well. And I was like, okay, I'm three and three. And I looked at him like, I'm out. And he's like, I knew the risk. And, <laughs> and I just like, <laughs> just left three. I'm like, of course this happened because we spoke it into existence, right? Yeah. Um, overall, I don't know if we got the update, but it worked out because my brother lives pretty close to where he lives. Yeah. So he gave him a ride. Yeah. Well, he was top. He was top eight, lucky. though, right? Yeah, like, he was top worst eight. Case, worst yeah. worst case, he could have just taken his top eight and left, right? Like, yeah. Eh. But he did. We went and got a steak and a beer. <laughs> Is what I was saying. He didn't play his top eight game. Oh, okay. So I thought it was pretty funny. Um, of course, that's that's how it happened. But I got absolutely crushed there. Uh, then I went and played at Games and Stuff. Uh, the next day in Maryland, Games and Stuff got a new store. It's like gorgeous. It's like the one of the best stores on the East Coast, in my opinion. The place is a massive. The branding is on point. Everything is clean. There's multiple bathrooms, not one bathroom, multiple bathrooms, multiple drinking fountains. This thing is set up like it's a convention hall. So I was super impressed by by the store and their new location. Uh, it ended up being like a 59 person tournament, which is a huge RTN. They were also like the only one on Sunday that was like anywhere close to anybody. Um played that event. Uh, I decided to, to do the same thing Dan did. I had played Drum My All Season. I want to play a fun deck. I played Dorinthia, uh, which was pretty fun. And then I went undefeated, won the tournament. So I got like, got my win. I was like super happy about that. Um, everyone was super nice. Uh, it was really fun to play. Um, I would, I can't wait to go back to that store because that store was gorgeous. Um, but all day I just did the thing. I swing my weapons and win games. Like, <laughs> the boots, swing the weapons, get, like get, <laughs> get good matchups. Don't get bad matchups. It, it, warrior good if yeah. you get good matchups, right? Like. Just a happy little warrior game. Yeah. So simple. It was so So easy on the brain. It was so relaxing. But that was a great way, I think, to end the RTN season for us um, because we have the Battle Harden this weekend. It's in Philly. And by Philly, it's Valley Forge Casino, which is not Philly at all. (laughs) But it's a much better location. So what happened in other places than with us is Dromai won the week. It just crushed everyone. And this was... I, I saw this at my RTNs. There was a ton of Dromai. I don't know. Was that how it was for you, Fino? I mean, it's always a ton of Dromai I mean, for you. Yeah, yeah. My my area is like 
mostly dromai. Like the, the tops are always mostly dromai. The room is mostly dromai. Like no matter like it's weird if dromai doesn't take up most of the top just because there's just so many in the room to begin with where it's odd if that doesn't happen. Yeah. Uh, like our our meta is so weird because of that because because of how many it pushes decks out of the meta so it creates this weird inbred meta where everything is polarized around Dromai. It's it's very weird. Yeah, I mean Dromai won fourteen RTNs this weekend, um, <clears throat> and when we went to Bearded Dragon, I was surprised by the number of Dromai. I played Dromai three times at at um, games and stuff, so it's out in force, uh, which is. Pretty expected, I think, with how the meta has started to shape out, right? Um, next is KO. KO is continuing to win, as KO should, because KO is the best deck in the game. I mean, <laughs> do we disagree with this yet? Yeah, did you say Kano? KO. Did I hear that correctly? No, Kano no. Is Kano, the best deck in Kano the game? is the second best deck in the game. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Tariq, uh, I believe, no, I had a tweet earlier today where he's asking people their opinion on uh, KO, and... Uh, I, I posted a thought on there, and uh, KO kind of reminds me of post Stubby's Ban Phi, where it's like, I, I think everyone kind of agrees, yeah, this is probably the best aggro deck in the game right now. It's something you go, you go to the tournament, you gotta respect the fact that Phi exists. It's not so crazy good that it maybe polarizes the meta around it like Lexi did, but it's... Yeah, it, this is the one of the best things that you can be doing in the game right now, and it's a very straightforward, linear aggro deck that's very good. It's asking a tough question on a lot of people. Yep, and it just sometimes yep. goes crazy. Like it yep. just sometimes has nut turns, and it has it can buy itself out of situations with scab skins. If we could just ban that card already, and Dan's suggestion from the a couple weeks ago is the best suggestion. It's just like it just gets them out of situations that after they've played themselves into a corner, and then they're just like. Oh, six. Look, I'm out of this. Oh, I can play the game again. You're just like, but but you did this to you. You you put yourself here. Yep. Yeah, uh, one of the KO games I played this weekend against one of my, uh, one of the guys from my local group, The Shrewdness, he l opens the freaking game going, eh, roll, just turn one, eh, roll scab skins, cast bones, cast bones. I'm like, brother, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? This, this is, you violated the law. <laughs> <laughs> classic brute players classic. Ah, roll scabs <laughs> uh, I roll scabs there every time yeah of course but still <laughs> the fact that you can is kind of like meh yeah me. no, I don't think that should exist uh, Azalea you, came in 8 which makes sense if we are seeing more KO rise up because that matchup is most of the time good for Azalea um, and I did notice mm, more Azalea was talked about, I think, this last week. There seemed to be a little bit yep. more or excitement around that hero um, as the meta starts to shift into a, you know, maybe a top five. Not like a top three, but maybe a top five or six decks, right? That's kind of what I've been seeing. I think it's a slow adoption. Yeah. I mean, I think everyone knows the deck is, like, busted. Like, it's a problem. Like, but not that many people play it, so. It's a problem, Dan? Is it ruining yeah. Fab? Huh. We had a whole episode, <laughs> about, a whole episode about this. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, however, Azalea can never be, like, too big of a meta because it counters itself, which is pretty funny. Um, Katsu, Ninjas decided they were going to show up this week and got seven wins. I, uh, cool. That, that that makes sense with the Dromize. Yeah, <laughs> makes sense because... Just in general, it's a hard deck to play against. If, if they draw well, like... Ah, uh, dude, new it's mask. It's if you mess up. The fact that they could just search their deck for two cards on one of their turns, they just, like, one of their turns, they just get to pick... Typically, they get to search the deck for three cards. Like, they hit, and they're like, Katsu ability, break mask. And then later, they're they're going to go, you know, search the deck again. And it's just like, ooh. I, I think that deck's fun to play, though, because you get to make those decisions. Like, it's so it's so much thinking to be like, ooh, I can get three cards from my deck? What what possible combination can I have to get the max amount of juice here? Um, mm -hmm. So I've liked Katsu. And then we have Kano again with six wins, which is still too many wins for a Kano. Uh, they're like tied for first in wins for the RTN season, which is not a world you want to live in. Um, but apparently it's not really a problem. So no one, no one cares. It's fine. We're totally not going to see a bunch of Kano show up pro tour. Uh, there's no way. Just, just play Oasis. It's yeah. Just play Oasis. Just stop playing greedy, uh, pitch colored <laughs> your decks. Run a deck that's half blue, draw all the reds. 
<laughs> Greedy deck. Greedy Oops. deck. Oops. Uh, and then Kasai <coughs> won six again. The exact same amount that Kasai has won like every week. Uh, it's been pretty Makes consistent. Sense. Victor dropped down to six. I think that's probably because of Rise of Dromai. I think. I think it's probably because of our tier list. True. They learned. People probably chose to not play. To be fair, they should play it at an RTN. They just shouldn't play it we at did, Pro We Tour. did say that. Like, this is just for what to play at Pro Tour, not for... That was my favorite thing. It's like, but this deck's good. And it's like, yeah, but not for Pro Tour. It's like, this is a whole different environment. It's a very specific niche tournament. Like, this, this one tournament. Um, yep. But I, I think Victor dropped a lot because of Dromai. Um, mm. I think if the Dromai is anyway a competent, that Victor just loses that matchup, like, pretty much all the time. Like, they just really can't win. They don't have the dominate pressure that Bravo does to, like, push through if they want to play that strategy. And they don't have the fatigue for it to work properly or the disruption or the disruption that's yeah that's been the big one uh that i felt in the matchup where i'm just like it's just numbers like yep. it, it's i i have so much agency over how i want to math the hands out where it's like you you there's so little you can do to make me give a shit about what's going on on board it, it's just it's just numbers yep i mean i'm still not great at drama yet but like that is the best matchup for learning how to play into fatigue like because you can make so many mistakes and still just get there like <laughs> it's like and you're like oh i kind of see how it all comes together like it's like a great trading bot for how to play against fatigue but it like can't do anything to you which is pretty funny uh then we have dorinthia with four one of them was mine we got Ooh. there let's go um that's a i think a a little down from week one i don't know where she was at week two and then bolton dropped uh to half at four and then other heroes got 13 wins uh, overall, for most players, I think, and for us, the RTN season is over. Um, I, I think have one more. You have one. Oh yeah, yeah. You're not going to battle party, right? That's unfortunate. Um, but how do we feel overall of this RTN season? How do we feel how it's been so far? Better. Like the meta, worse? or I had, I had fun? just just in general. Is it the same as the last RTN season you uh, played? In? Attendance has been incredible. Absolutely. Like best since we started playing the game, right? And you would come in yeah. like, yeah, like we haven't had like 40 person events since like 2022, I feel like. And they were sold out. Like the events that we went to yeah. that weren't like that big, they were just sold out. They just didn't have room. Yeah. No, that was, that was really awesome. All the ones that I went to were between 20 and hard capped 32 people. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any stores that I went to that were capped above 32. Ah. Mm. Um, experience at them was fine it, uh i think to me it was more i was kind of disappointed in myself for my performance this season uh while i finally got my first win at one i only top aided twice i think maybe it was three times i can't remember uh, and I, i'm very disappointed in myself for that because like this is every every single other season of proquester rtn since the first one the, the tunic one i've only missed one top eight every season and this season, it's been the other way around where I've only top aided twice. So I'm like, man, what happened this season to me? Not been a good year for me so far. Well, we got a couple of weeks to tighten it up for Pro Tour. And then you won't care. <laughs> Just top Pro Tour and then it alleviates there's, all problems. There's, there's a silver lining, though. There's a store in New Hampshire. Uh, awesome CCG. Uh, if you, if any, if anyone watching this is a Pokemon person, the uh, the awesome gaming couple, they're, they're like a, a big person in that community from a, a while back. Um, every single season, when I go to their store to play, like their last event before the major, if I do good at that event, I do terrible at the major. <laughs> I went two to drop at that event. Every time I do terrible. I've top aided. So <laughs> predestined. Yeah. Hopefully this trend <laughs> continues. This is, this has been the case, I think three times now. So <laughs> let's, let's hope this trend continues. I'll take the L on a $50 goddamn promo <laughs> to top eight the pro tour. There you go. Dan, how's your end season been overall? I think it's the best meta we've ever had. <laughs> Like, CC does actually feel really good. Like, th there are a lot of, like, terrible matchups you can run into, but, like, there's, like, 30 playable heroes now, and, like, a lot of the matchups are, like, somewhat skill-intensive. Like, it could go either way. 
Um, even with the KOs, like, if they don't high roll, like, you can get there. Um, so, yeah, no, I don't know. I think CC is actually feeling really good. I played three different decks this season. Uh, Joe might felt a little worse than the others because of whatever I ran into, but, like, they all felt fun to play and, like, fine. Uh, I think draft is, like, a little too high variance for me if you're not specifically a warrior. Um, I, I think it's, like, by far <clears> the <throat> highest variance that we've ever had. Like, it's just everywhere. Like, every action is variance. Um, and I think it works, and I think it's, like, really fun and a great draft set. Just so many feel bads. Like, every game a wild ride misses, and someone feels terrible about it. I do I, think this is one of my favorite draft sets that we've had so far. Agreed. This has felt more yep. interesting to me in both the draft portion and in the games. Just, like, the decisions I'm making feel more important than they have in a lot of the previous sets. I, I feel like I have a lot more meaningful agency over these things than... Just like, I'm four picks in, I'm Prism, I'm on rails for the rest of the draft. Okay, play my games, every Prism game plays the same. Like, I, I feel like there's way more going on and it, it feels good. Uh, there can be more improvement, obviously. But I think this has been, like, the biggest step forward in draft that they've made in a long time. I, I'm, I'm very, very pleased. I'm looking forward to seeing more. Yeah, this is my favorite RTN season since Tunic season, which was, like, the first one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but was that just because the tunics uh, chain and tunic? You can't, you can't. <laughs> yeah. It's chain and tunic, like yeah, and like sold out events again and sold out. Yeah, they're huge events. Like no one wants to win an eleven person RTN. Like no. well, whatever. Um, but you top if you win the first round. Like, like. <laughs> but overall, uh, I met a lot of great people. I think this is the best RTN meta we've ever had. And quick I, story I, time. I, quick story time. The the eleven person thing. Yeah. I had a um. A skirmish like that once where it was exactly nine people and i was like oh so it's win round one and then you top so i won round one and then just scooped the next two rounds because my deck sucked and i just didn't feel like playing and i was like oh crazy i'm top eight then we find out that um so the guy felt bad so he gave ninth place uh it was one of the phase I i'm forgetting which one um phase uh, uh the block out party um for, for for viewers um he gave him like a cold foil briar promo or something i forget what it was like some army promos he like oh it was cold foil rosetta and a rainbow foil briar he like gave him army promos because he felt bad and they told the rest of us so we didn't get the skirmish kit in yet so we don't have anything to give you guys for top eight uh we'll mail it to you they never mailed it to us they never ran a fab event again. <laughs> they just oh. <laughs> so ninth place was the play. He he's the only person that got anything. <laughs> Sorry, that's great. Um, I was saying that like, I think this legitimately like no no joke. I think this is the best mm -hmm. RTN meta we've ever had. Um, this meta is super fun to go to an RTN at because you can bring whatever you want. And you have a shot at topping. You have a shot at getting your invite. It's not how it's ever been. And I think that's great. I think that's great for an RTN meta. Um, so I have, I thought it was great. I feel like I can bring whatever I want and I, my ch I have a, I have a chance to actually win. And that is not how yeah. it's ever been before. And I think that's great. Really, the people agree level. as well. Yeah. People are showing up. People are bringing whatever they, I'm playing different decks every round for the most part. Um, and so like, I think all of that is great. Uh, I met a lot of ton, it's, it's, ton of people. It. It's not play Lexi, play deck that beats Lexi, yeah. or you're an idiot for not playing these things. Yeah, like, like the had, last Pro Tour so one was dumb. They, they needed to get rid of Lexi. It was so depressing. But we've had like a bunch of seasons like that where it's like play the deck, play the deck that yep. beats the deck, play Prism because it beats those decks, or you're just an idiot for bringing anything yep. else. Like Bra Starvo season, Briar season. But that season. was fine because you won Tunics if you made the right choice. Yes. So no complaints. I will say I for for the last one, like to give an example, like the last pro quest season when Lexi was available, I didn't play Lexi the whole season and there was the final pro quest and I hadn't qualified yet. And I said, fine, I'll just play Lexi and qualify. And I just won the whole thing with Lexi. Like that, that was, I tried to avoid it. I tried to play other decks, like do other things. And then it was just like, fine, I'll just do it. And then it was just like, win. Like, and it was nice that that's not how it is this season. Like you can literally just be like, no, I'm going to qualify on Katsu. And then like your chances of qualifying are like 
good. Like they're they're not like it's not a bad pick to bring to your RTN, right? Like uh, I like that. I think that's great. Yeah, agree. Agreed. Um, everyone I've met has been has been awesome. Um, I've had a, a ton of great games. A lot of people who have been around for a while. Some new players as well. Um, all my games have been good. I, I just like have no complaints over this season. I think it was super fun. I think uh, I had a very very good season personally as well. Um, I think this is my first time really just going like straight undefeated in Swiss on different decks. Like it's just not something that I normally do and in draft. So a um, couple barriers for me personally and my own personal growth that I was able to break this season. Cool. I'm not really hear hearing people complain that much about stuff either. It's like some people are like, mm, cast bones is a little, mm, but like, it's it's no codex. It's just like yeah. mm, that's kind of an annoying card to play into sometimes. And then it's just Kano yeah. being Kano, and and that's about it. And then like that's not everyone even has to deal with that issue because you might not have Kano players in your area, so like maybe you don't have to deal with that. It's, everything's very like yeah, everything's kind of fine. Nothing's like egregious. Agreed. Except yeah. Kano. Flesh and blood is fun right now. Agree. Great. Uh, before we get into the main topic, I think we're going to switch and do some of our Discord questions. And then we also have an announcement for uh, Pro Tour uh, as well. Uh, but if you would like to be able to ask questions in our Discord uh, or on the podcast, you join our premium Discord. Uh, the Discord is created for people who want to take the game a little bit more seriously and are looking for like-minded people who have the same values or are also looking to take the game seriously. Um, we also have a bunch of different promotions and different tier levels uh, for joining as well. And this uh, pro tour, I'm going to let Dan go in. We are doing a giveaway. And Dan, if you want to talk about the giveaway we're going to be doing at the pro tour. I would love to. Uh, so, yeah, very similar to the envelopes in darkness. If you remember those from U.S. National Championship, I believe, last year. Yep. Um, we have created a new set of custom tokens. You can see it here. It's a little... Runaways Knight Agility Token. I'm sure you can't read that. Um, on the back, we have a QR code to join our Discord and a little description of the contest. Uh, but basically, if you join the Discord and become a premium subscriber, or if you're already a premium subscriber, you will be entered into a contest for our content creator promos. So I'll we'll have two winners. One winner will get the Cold Foil Boast promo. It's a pretty sick promo, Extended Art Cold Foil. Uh, I know the content creator ones usually go for quite a bit. And then we have the, the Boast playmat. <laughs> Hard to show off, but there he is. Looking good. Uh, so we'll pick two winners. Um, you get extra entries if you're a Majestic subscriber. Uh, if you're a Rare subscriber, you'll get one entry. Um, but yeah, come find any of the Runaways at uh, Pro Tour Los Angeles. And hopefully they'll have some tokens on them to, to pass out. And if you play against them, you should get one as well. Uh, it was super uh, fun to do last time. Uh, so yep. looking forward to doing it again. And the Quicken token is pretty cool. Uh, not Quicken. Mm -hmm. uh, agility this time is uh, pretty cool. Yep. Okay. So into I just, our I just questions. thought of what we we should do another one at some point. That's a sell sword. That would also be a good one for the, the runaways <laughs> <Ooh>. guy. <laughs> that would, yeah, that would be next. a good one. I like that. And we'll, all of us love Kasai. So we'll, we'll, we'll personally potentially use it. Look, I, I complain about Kasai a lot. But I love Kasai. Like, I really actually yep. thoroughly enjoy playing the deck. I just wish I could play the deck. That's actually yep. been a, a funny thing that I've been like, this Can past week, flesh and blood. this mm -hmm. past week, I've been like writing a ton of articles for Dromai. And in doing that, uh, there's also the like people talking about like, oh, she might LL soon. And I've been thinking about this this whole Please. week. Like, what do I do? Where do I go now that Dromai might LL? And I think I'm just going to end up to the Kasai because like Prism isn't that style of play that I gravitate towards, even though I love Prism as a character, mm -hmm. it's it's not the grindy deck that I, I like to play. Because I might end up be where I, I end up gravitating towards after this. That yeah. makes sense. I think Dromai is the biggest issue right now for Kasai. Like, it's too popular for, like, how unbelievable, unbelievably unwinnable <laughs> that matchup is. Yes. Okay. First question here from Cusco. It says, uh, if you could have Cusco. one... Cusco! Yes. Every time. <laughs> Uh, if you could have one card from another card game ported into Fab, uh, which card would it be, and how would you make it work in Fab? This is a good question. That probably reserves more That's time. That's easy for me. Oh, really? Is it yeah. Pot of Greed? 
Can you tell me what that uh, it, does? It's kind of a joke. I don't actually want this, but this is <laughs> the type of play style I like. It's a hyperspace jump from oh. Star Wars Destiny. And it would be probably a four cost instant that says end the current turn. <laughs> <laughs> That's so they it... play like a, I don't know, play Blood Rush Bellow, respond, end the turn. I mean, it's, it's literally just dark light. Yeah, it probably has to cost six, <laughs> but yes. Yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> like Arc Light. <laughs> like Arc Light, yeah. But it's but like that's a better how I like to play Light. Destiny. Yeah. I play all my things, you play nothing. I mean, speaking of cards that already exist that I want to see in the game that exist for Prism, <laughs> um, my favorite style of card to play in uh, other resource based games like Magic and things like that is a uh, Howling Mine effects, where it's a symmetrical effect that you, because you know it's in your deck, you get to deck build around it and it becomes an asymmetrical effect. Technically, you already have that with Library. But it just doesn't quite play out that way in this game. And like it being a one of and just the kind of the, the play patterns with it is not quite the same. Like, um, I think we've talked about this game on the pod before, Duelist. Um, <clears throat> one of my favorite cards in that game was a creature that was a Howling Mine. And because of that I deck built my deck in such a way where it was a much lower curve than is normal for that style of deck that I was playing. Like usually it's like, um, I'm trying to play this like late game style deck and you're like trying to go up that curve slowly where the, because I had this, I filled out my curve with just all low cost stuff and then high cost stuff. And then I would use that to buy space in the middle of the game and play all this cheap shit where I have all these extra cards. And then when they finally get my howling mind guy off the board, I'm like, okay, I bought enough time. I'm going to start slamming my big cards. Um, I don't know. I, I like effects like that. It's interesting. Yeah. Things that change the way the game is played, I find, are really interesting. Yeah, good lands that you can build around. Um, I mean, what I would I would like to see, I mean, a couple of things. I don't, this isn't doable, but I would love to see gadgets from, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! in the deck. I fucking, I love gadgets, man. Uh, it, so you want the little back. Yes. That's why I love the little, but it's just like gadgets, gadgets for people who don't know. It's like, there's a red, green, yellow gadget. And all it is in Yu-Gi-Oh is you play one of them and it, ser it searches the next color over. And then you play the next one and it searches the next color over, but you could typically only play like one around. So like the, the way, way it did is like, you just played one and then you got to pick one and put it in your hand. And you just like, didn't lose a card in your hand to put this terrible monster into play. Um, and so it was just like a grind out strategy, you know, like belittle, you know, it did something kind of similar to that. But yes, I would like, I like, I like one for one trading with like, just trying to get a, a plus one, like just a plus one advantage, which is, you know, why I like playing Kasai, because that's kind of what that deck feels like. Your plus one is like a, a piece of copper. I got like a piece of copper or I got a gold or something. Right. Um, but I would like, you know, something like that. I, I like searching my deck. We don't really have a lot of search your deck effects. Um, I would like a couple more. Yeah, okay. similarly, I, I enjoyed yeah, in Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, just more shuffles. Yeah. I enjoyed in Yu-Gi-Oh, like, trying to do that with a Icarus attack. Like, oh, when you went plus one off of an Icarus attack, it just felt so... You're like, ah, I juiced you. <laughs> this isn't supposed to be a plus one, but I gotcha. Smashing ground, respond, Icarus attack. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, next question here from Fighting Walloon. Uh, do you enjoy playing games, uh, just playing games of fab? Uh, if you're not preparing for a competitive event, how much do you play games for fun with friends? Uh, I think this is an interesting question. Yep. I mean, right after like pro tours and stuff, I need a, a little break, not a big break, usually a week. Um, but during off season, I'm like excited to play armories and stuff. I have a lot of fun playing still. Um, if my like non competitive flesh and blood friends wanted to play flesh and blood, I would be thrilled, but they don't. <laughs> So yeah, I, I enjoy playing Flesh and Blood, mostly in the Flesh and Blood. I don't test that much online during offseason. I go in and out of that. Like, the past year, I wasn't really enjoying it as much, just casually, just for fun. The I just didn't care for playing the... F the it, the games were competitive, but they weren't fun, you know what I mean? Like, a lot of the games felt very mathy and not as engaging. Like, the most fun I had in that last year was going back to play that LL format where like these games are just super high intensity. They're interesting. They're fun. Um, 
I had a lot of fun playing back then when we had all this powerful shit going on. Um, and I've started having fun again. Like, this draft format has felt fun for me because of the interesting decision-making. But, like, a, a lot of last year, I was just like, yeah, this is this is a game. that I, I am... I'm pushing the buttons and doing the thing. I'm not as engaged as I previously was. So I'm starting to come back into playing for fun again. Yeah, I mean, I will probably play a game here or there. I'm a kind of, I've said it a million times, I'm pretty de degenerate. I might take like a week off after a major. I, I've I've come back from like Worlds and stuff. And then like the next day, I'm just playing Talishar games for no reason. Like I've 100% done that. I always still go to locals um, after majors as well. But I typically bring like Vincent or something fun that I'm just like, the stuff I wasn't allowed to play during testing, like that's what that's what I do after a major. I'm just like, okay, let me bring this thing I, I couldn't play at all because you know there's no shot that it's like playable at the major. Let me just start playing those decks again, and having the fun aspect. But as far as like most, I don't. Most of us don't like go into person other than like a local to play Flesh and Blood outside of competitive events. Um, it's just like Talishar online. Okay, uh, the Judster asks what are your team rules guidelines around conceding to other team members uh qualifying for events i.e are you only conceding a top eight last round of swiss not at all there are no rules no rules no straight up there's like no rules it's individual discretion yep. only yeah my biggest thing is like try and emphasize that like it is entirely your decision for that kind of thing like th no one on the team should ever feel pressure to concede to anyone else on the team if you want to play flesh and blood we are here to be the best flesh and blood, flesh and blood players we can be, and you should battle it out. With that said, we are all also people who play card games and know how probabilities and, and things work. And quite often than not, we are willing to concede simply for the fact that it is beneficial for us in the future to be willing to do that because that means other people will be willing to do it for us. But there is no rule. Like if someone was like, I don't want to concede, yeah. that's not a big deal. Yeah. Don't expect a concession. Nope. You're not expected to concede. Do what you want to do. But we're also all friends. Yes. So, yeah. like, there's also that, like, yeah. I, oh, I want to make sure that my buddy gets in. So you're just going to, a lot of us probably would want to, like, let our buddy get in. If it's, if I'm the, I'm going to be the gatekeeper, I'm going to feel bad about that. Like, I'm going to help my buddy get in. Yeah. And you get a lunch break out of the deal. Like, can't beat it. Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, Stefan asks... Uh, first of all, congratulations on success with the Runaways that we've been having this season. He says that we are now his favorite team to track, so that is very nice of him. Um, Thank you. <laughs> do you think Fatigue decks got the results that you expected? As a player who rarely had trouble versus Fatigue decks, I see a lot of people, even at high level, struggle. Uh, was this more of the Fatigue player slash deck being good, or was other people not understanding how to win the game? Uh, it was Crown of Seeds. Um, it was just... Like historically? That's what this seems to say, yeah. I think it's both. I, I think if you like, if you don't have a game plan, you, you do just kind of lose. Yep. I think both is definitely correct. I also fatigue fatigue strategies in the past just were uh, infinitely more consistent and stronger. Uh, we did have stronger decks as well, um, but obviously beating fatigue as as chain mm, thirty percent of the time was really hard. There was like a good like thirty percent of the time you just like won the game like like it didn't matter what the chain player did they just like ooga booga their way into winning against a fatigue player and then there was like 30 percent of the time that they might probably don't win that game because <laughs> like they just draw everything in the wrong order and then it doesn't yep. kind of doesn't matter all the howls. yeah all the howls and like you just start banishing like your art of wars and stuff and you're like whatever man uh and but then like the other 30 percent of the time like you have your minimalism so you can't belittle correct oh you have your... not my gadget <laughs> not my gadget uh <laughs> then the other ones you have like full control over but for like the most part, it's just like a lot of decks just kind of sometimes are bad in the fatigue. Naturally. Yep. But right now, I don't think fatigue is a real deck. Personally. <laughs> stuff like stuff like KO goes too high on one turn. Like they just kind of spike you in a couple of rounds and it's just like, oh. No, I don't think so either. And Dromai is traditionally good into fatigue. Mm -hmm. Popular deck right now. Yep. yep. There's too many decks you need, like, a, a sideboard plan for if you're fatiguing. Because what people don't realize, like, fatigue decks, if they lose a match, they pretty much always lose the match. Like, yeah. it's, it, it isn't, 
currently the way fatigue decks work. This wasn't always the case in the past with like old time stuff, but currently how fatigue de decks work is like if they lose a matchup, they will always lose a matchup because the fatigue deck is always doing the same thing. Yeah. Um, and so like if the you, math is the math, the math is the math. So that's why they're not as good as right now. It's because like KO is just like cast bones. Big thing. Yeah. Like two but it's also like things. Dromai and like Dromai Bolton does thing and and Kano. Kano. Like yeah. you have to. Exactly. Uh, who's too, got time for that? Too many things. Uh, okay, next is going to be from Clads, and it says, how much stock should you put into an opponent's body language uh, or length of time they make uh, to decide a play? For instance, if an opponent takes a while uh, to make a play, they decide on CNC, um, and they have enough resources to pummel, is it appropriate to consider that they might they probably don't have the pummel since they didn't slam it? Never trust your opponent is always my number one rule. Yeah. Sometimes but I there are like my... hard tells, I think sometimes. Yeah, I don't I don't feel comfortable giving those away, though. <laughs> yeah, I, that makes sense. <laughs> that, Agreed. That, that one... But yeah, never trust your opponent. Like there's so many cases where my opponent's been like. Like representing a tell and I'm like, I feel like you're. Trying to trick me. <laughs> I, I have a great story for this. Uh, I was playing yeah. Worlds against Mara and I'm playing Icelander. And she's obviously playing Dromai and it's like. Not a turn I want to pop off on, but it's a turn that I could go for the win on. Um, and she has like, uh, she's coming in like pretty hot. So I have to do something to disrupt her. And I do the thing and I get some damage in. And she has like no cards left in hand. She can't kill me this round. Or uh, she can kill me this round with dragons if I like don't kill her here. Um, and if I decide not to kill her, then I'm going to have to like block or do things in a very specific way in order to live. Right. But she has one card set. And I don't know what that card is. And it could easily be a sand cover, right? Um, but I thought in my head that it was a card that I forced her to, to put down there because I popped something. And I still think that's probably the case. But I, we, we go through everything. She has no cards in hand. Her attack is sitting on the chain. And I'm thinking about if I'm going to pop off or not. And then she says to me, hey, do you got it? That was, that was what she said to me. And I said, it's a little BM if you have a sand cover set to say that. Um, obviously is a joke like no, nothing that she said convinced me to do it but i thought it was funny because she asked hey do you have it like hey if you just have the thing then i lose uh which is like the terminology there and i just said hey i think it's pretty bm if you have <laughs> sand cover set she didn't, didn't say anything after that but the math made sense in the way that the turn was going to play out and the, the the fact that she was probably going to have a blue in her next hand i probably had to to pop off on that turn and so i made that decision and then she played the sand cover and we both just kind of looked at each other and i was like but that's like an example of like never trust your opponent like some people would would either get baited into doing the thing because they said the words or, you know, they would, you know, but in that case, it didn't have any bearing on me, but it, I think it's yep. a funny story. I mean, I do think there's a lot of value in like taking all the information that mm -hmm. your opponent presents, like the card they pitch, the way they pitch it, their body language, all that stuff. But like, yeah, you don't want to go too deep and like, you just can't trust what they're, what they're telling you, right? You can factor it in, but like, don't say like this is factual because they said they don't have it or they're representing they don't have it right yep mm -hmm. i had the exact same opposite thing happen at my nationals uh top eight match there was a, a moment where i had to decide how much i was going to block for because my opponent had a lightning press i lose the game and i needed to think about if they're going to have it or not and i was taking a while and i couldn't figure out like it, i'm kind of making a guess but at the same time the the judge is like hey you're gonna have to make a decision even though we were on stream like you still have to make a decision. I said, yeah, but I'm really trying to figure out if he has a lightning press or not. And I said this out loud. I'm really trying to figure out if he has a lightning press or not because you know, it's basically the whole game right here. And my opponent said something and I don't remember what it was, but it was something like, yeah, it would be like, it was some comment like that. But it was like, it was like the tone of his voice immediately in my head. It triggered. He doesn't have this. And I just blocked that like he didn't have it and he didn't have it. It was just like, I can't explain where that feeling came from. It's hard. You just sometimes soul read hard, people. But I just like the way he said it, just felt like he didn't have one and sometimes you go with that gut yeah. sometimes you that's don't. why it's best not to table talk if you can help it yeah i can't like, do that you no. probably don't <laughs> <give> <laughs> away. so yeah i, I had a, a moment of that this week i was telling cody about that the other night like i just soul read one of my opponents uh uh jesse at uh the rtn he just like the way something he did i, I still can't tell why i knew just however he presented himself. I was like, "You have a pummel right now," and I just stopped attacking because I, I did. I thought he had pummel C and C, and I didn't want to uh, give him a chance to block with an additional card on this turn because 
it would make it more efficient if he pummel C and sees me, he was going to IP himself. It just like didn't make sense for him to not block if he had that. I ended up only being half right. He had the pummel, but he didn't have the C and C. He had um, one of the big dumb guardian attacks that comes in for 10. And he, I said that out loud. I'm like, this smells like pummel C and C. Pass. And he just goes... <laughs> See, there's like a reflection behind him. He's like, what... What did you get that from? I didn't even do anything. So the answer is sometimes. <laughs> so, sometimes they, you absolutely get reads. Yeah. That Think is a real it. skill. Think about what you're you're being told here. Yeah. But. but it is a real skill. Reads are a real thing in card games. Um, body language is a real thing. And then there's the metagame of some people are able to pretend that they are bad when they're good. It's a whole poker mechanic, right? And so like... What kind of player are you playing against? You don't know. But there is a whole metagame about that. It isn't used as much at a professional level. Like, sometimes you have to use try and use something like that to try and get, like, some type of edge in a situation. But for the most part, most of the plays for are, like, heads up. Like, you know what you're supposed to do in that situation. So yep. you're not really going off a tell. It's always I, good to be aware of. I always I go back to Icelander. Like, just think about every time they say... Does this resolve? Think about it for like six seconds. Two and then say, yes, you're good. Yes. <laughs> yeah, six. six is too much. Six, six is, is too way much. too many seconds. <laughs> six is a lot of seconds. <laughs> I I I love it though when you see those at the high level. Like, um, did you guys see the um Sorry, my Sorry. Um the uh pen trick that LSV did at the Pro Tour with yeah. um like, that was one of my favorite all-time card gaming moments of him just, like, mind-gaming his opponent into making that play. I was just like, oh, chef's kiss. Wait, what did he do? You gotta tell the story now. He... Go watch he, the YouTube video. It's much better than any story oh. we can tell. Okay, okay. I'll watch it. Just look at it, LSV pen trick, and then, like, you'll see the video, and it's... I'll like, link you later. Yeah. Cool. I, we, uh, I'll, I'll send it to Ethan so we can put it in the description. There's a chance that might not even be legal in most card games, which is pretty funny. Mm-hmm. I mean, the thing was, he didn't do anything. Like, he was, like, kind of like this. And then the thing that, like, really sold... The it, token? His, his, yeah, his, no, his opponent grabbed the I token know. from him. Yeah. He, like, was trying to line up blocks like he was going to use one of his lands that makes a guy to block with the guy. And he's, like, sorting his lands like he would use the, the land to make the thing. And then his opponent also does the math on blocks, grabs the token from LSV, lines up the block before it would happen. And he's like, okay, surely he's going to attack this way or block this way. And he baits him into doing that because he has a one of uh, Wrath of God in his list that he can play to, that kills all attackers. So he needs him to swing out to use this. Otherwise, it doesn't, it doesn't do anything here and he loses the game. Mm. Yeah. It's just like... It is, it is worth watching, for sure. Uh, okay, uh, last question here is from Ham, and it says, what is a KO cube, and how do I build one? Dan? Yeah. Uh, KO cube is a two-player cube that I built where both players play as KO, the original. Um, I think he has a name, title, whatever. You're both KO, you roll dice a lot. Um, but basically... What I did, and I think works pretty well, is you start the game with scabs, you start the game with knucklehead, you start the game with bark bone strapping, and uh, skill crushers. That's like the most fun part of it. Um, Berserker runt. Berserker runt, thank you. <laughs> um, so like both players start the draft, the game, whatever with that. Um, and then you basically take one copy of every card that exists in Flesh and Blood that is generic or brute. Um, that has a base attack of six or more. And then you take, what, like three copies of every card that rolls a die. And you put it in a pile, and you shuffle the pile, and you play Flesh and Blood. And you just share the deck, and <laughs> you roll a bunch of dice, and it's a lot of fun. <laughs> um, I, I have a link on the, the, the cube, the Fab Cube site. I forgot the name of it. Um, it's on my Twitter, too. You can check it at Disc Golf Dan. I posted the my updated list. I haven't tested it too much. If anyone actually plays it, let me know. I added like clash cards and 
um, some wagering because I think that that fits the vibe pretty well. Nice. Okay, let's get into the main topic here. Uh, it shouldn't be that long one, uh, but this is the best I meta. We had a main topic. Yeah, this is the best <laughs> the best meta we have ever had. I feel like we said something different, like an ah, episode or two ago. I forgot. Uh, I forgot the disclaimer for RTNs. Uh, this is the best meta we've ever had for RTNs, and I think. Yeah, no, I agree. Yes, yeah, absolutely. It's like maybe it's not a, close. I don't it's think so. It's funny. Close. I think. I think the the one of the worst metas was the Lexi meta at an RTN level, but then I think yeah. that was one of the best metas at a more professional level. Like that was, I think one of my favorite metas to play in at a tournament level. Yep. Makes sense. I think the meta is not bad for pro tour. It's just like, it's fine. The, the, the only complaint about pro tour is just that you're gym locking with almost any deck that you pick, but in an RTN that doesn't really matter. Like you're going to get a couple bad matchups. Most of it's going to be play skill. Anyway, you can bring whatever you want. Going to RTNs this season has been awesome. I think this meta is great for that. It's great for players who are going to locals, going to RTNs, most of the players in the game. Uh, I I think this is one of the best spots it's ever been in, and it's like a great time to jump in and play the game. Yep. Could not agree more. And people are? People are, yeah. I mean, I don't... I'm hoping that some of this is more natural than, you know, I know we had a couple stores in the area that just, like, didn't get, didn't get stuff this time that they normally would have. They didn't get RTNs that they normally mm-hmm. would have. So I'm hoping that didn't compress too many things. Um, I guess we'll see kind of what happens at the Battle Hardened as well. I'd be curious to see what those numbers are going to be. Yeah. Yeah, the store that I normally run, uh, like I, I help one of the stores run events. And they didn't get an RTN, and we've been running stuff mm-hmm. since Tales of Aria. They just didn't get one this season. Yeah. Yeah, I think they like to rotate. Yeah, my, my local store, which is, you know, alternate universes, usually okay. has one. They didn't get one this time. Um, and then one of my favorite stores... Uh, in the area like the banner zone did not get one they are a huge fab supporter they play have one k's they have a huge turnout for their armories uh they do they run like daily like pickup tournaments where just like four people or six people show up to the shop and they like every day run a you know run like a, a free a free play uh which might hurt their numbers or something but unknown but they didn't get a, get one and i was very shocked by that we did get a pro quest though uh, great stories hmm. in uh, Uxbridge. Or is it Wittensville? Yeah, I think this is also a good meta for Battle Harden, right? Like, I, I don't really have an issue going yeah. to a battle. I, okay, so I value Battle Hardens very low on tiers of, like, events. These are, like, lower than RTNs for me in a lot of cases because, like, the RTN invite yeah, is more important. PTI is, like, super valuable, but it's just not... It's only one and two. Well, it's also not the focus. Like, yeah, it's harder to yeah. get. Yeah, it's just one and two. Like, you have to go one or two to like get anything worthwhile at the at the at the battle harden. But it's kind of weird now. Like, I feel like I go harder for pro quest because I need that pro tour. In <laughs> yeah, and you have to win that. And like battle harden, it's like similar. I don't know. I just have like, for some reason, my brain is just like there. It's just not the level, the amount of people there, and how well you have to do versus the prizing. The prizing is just bad. Yeah, like it's just Agreed. bad at a battle harden. But it's fun. I, I like going. I'm going to go this weekend and have a good time. I feel like this meta is great for Battle Hardens because we like to sprinkle them everywhere. You can bring whatever you want. Your chances of topping are there. Um, I can bring whatever deck I want to bring this weekend, and I think I have a chance to top with. And that's pretty cool. Yep. So, uh, any other thoughts on this being probably the best local level RTN level battle hardened level meta we've ever had. Uh, I think it's looking good for ProQuest. My understanding is that that is entirely classic constructed. Okay. Oh, really? I did not know that. Someone said that and I did like a half confirm. I didn't full confirm. It makes sense because like we're not getting a new draft set. True. Okay. Um, but we're also not getting a new CC set, right? So. The meta's staying around, I think. <laughs> so the meta's just... Unless, <laughs> so, someone might LL at a pro tour rate. Like, Phi, Dromai, I think, are in range. Getting close. Oh, man, if Dromai went... Oh, Fino, can you win? So we can... <laughs> Wait, we could win. So I we accept. Can, like, I accept. Yeah. I accept. I'll, I'll win the pro tour. I'll do it for everyone. What I wouldn't do for Prism, I'll do for Dromai. I don't care if she goes. 
No, I think it's uh, bring Dromai. That's the real play. Bring Dromai. Not because you want to play Dromai. We have to redo the tier list. Yeah. Bring Dromai so that we get it LL'd so we can play the decks we want to play. Yeah. That, that's it. That's, it's okay if that's the present pieces, whatever. Yeah, who cares? So the whole team's going to be on Dromai then? Whole team on Dromai. Let's go. New rule. New, <laughs> new Runaways rule. Everyone on Dromai to the LLs. <laughs> get this thing out of here so we can play real decks. Yeah. <laughs> no, all my articles. <laughs> <laughs> Your whole Patreon just lighting on fire. <laughs> that's great. Okay, well, that's all we got. Uh, we're we're going to go ahead and get out of here. It, it's a great meta. I have had a great time with the RTN. Please come by at the the Battle Harden and say hi to us and and play games and have a good time. See you guys. Bye. Yeah, we're getting rid of the envelope. Seven. Here, but, um, envelope we could do here darkness. is go ahead and play the envelope. Uh, all three pitches of envelope and darkness.